one of the most difficult things to do is find yourself in a storm. And while in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. And sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, to still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. Well, that's what we want to do tonight is we want to trust him. We want to give it all to him, knowing that he's able to change our lives and uh, get us where we need to be today. And that's why we want to welcome you once again to the Perfect Fit 12-Step Christian-Based Program. Again, that's the Perfect Fit 12-Step Christian-Based Program that we are working step number five tonight. I am your host, Reverend Mike Main. We are coming to you from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And yes, I do have a cold. Uh, this is not a voiceover. <clears throat> I have a cold. But uh, I appreciate your prayers and uh, your uh, emails and your phone texts and all those things. And uh, continue to keep in contact with me. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. And knowing that God is able to change our situations in our lives. And the glory be to him. I would ask that you would join us every Friday here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Again, that's every Friday at 7 p.m. Be sure to uh, like and or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, like us on Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Google+, and uh, Twitter. Tell your friends about us. Tell them to stay tuned. Tune in. Tell them to jump in. Uh, come in on a, on a Friday night. Jump in, grab some chips, grab some popcorn, grab some cotton candy. I don't care, whatever your treat is, grab it, sit down with this, let's settle in, and let's get this lesson going tonight, and let's help someone else where they are, as well as help ourselves to walk the steps. There are 12 steps here. This is the Perfect Fit Christian-based 12-step program, and we are working every step. We've already went over uh, the steps, the previous steps of step one, two, three, and four, and we're going to be doing step number five tonight. So join us. Hi, how you doing? I'm Reverend Mike Main, coming to you from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. We're going to be doing step number five tonight, but we want to pray before we get started. So if you would, join in with me and let's pray and let's ask God's blessing upon this tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to come together once again. Lord, we ask your blessing to be on upon me and my health as well as we ask, Lord God, that you bless those that are joining and that, Lord God, sit in on these lessons each week to, Lord God, better themselves in their lives, Lord God, to, to help make a difference, Lord God, where they struggle with addictions and compulsive behaviors and unmanageable lives, Lord. We're asking, Lord God, your blessing to be upon them. Lord God, keep us safe and in your will and your perfect care tonight and help us, Lord God, to get all that we can get out of this lesson. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. I'm glad you could join me again, once again. <clears throat> Give me a second. I will be doing that periodically here tonight just because it is uh, something that I am out of control with. Uh, I'm really congested, uh, sinuses, cough. Uh, last, uh, the beginning of the week, I had hardly any voice. So uh, bear with me tonight. We're going to be going over lesson number five. We want to reiterate a little bit of lesson number one. We went over, it said that we admitted we were uh, powerless over our addictions and our compulsive behaviors and that our lives had become unmanageable. We also want to be go uh uh, going over here tonight, we want to uh, also go over, uh, uh, not go over, but recap lesson number two, which was uh, we came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And then lesson number three, we decided uh, to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. And then lesson number uh, four, we uh, came to uh, do a personal inventory uh, of where we were in our lives and, and examine ourselves. And now lesson number five, we're going to talk about we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact natures of our wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're probably asking yourself or wondering, uh, uh, Brother Main, why are we admitting again? Uh, we already admitted in, in step one, and, and that's what step one is about, is about admitting uh, that we are uh, powerless over our addictions and our compulsive behaviors and our 
lives have become unmanageable. However, in step five, we are admitting again, but we're admitting to God what? We're admitting to God and to ourselves and to other human beings the exact nature of our wrong. That's what we're admitting. It's not so much that we're admitting again. It's, it's the fact that we're taking it to God and then we're taking it to other human beings and then we're letting them not just know about it, but we're giving them the exact nature of our wrong. Uh, what was our wrongs? What did we do wrong? Uh, how, why did we do what we did wrong? And what was the effects from it? Uh, tonight, we're going to go over these keys as I do each lesson. Uh, keys to step five is this. The first uh, key to step five is we admit. Uh, we admit to a lot of things. Uh, it's hard, I find, sometimes in my life to admit when I'm wrong. But you know what? Uh, I've found more now today in my life, more so than ever, that when I am wrong to admit it because, uh, you know, uh, it's just the thing that you learn over time in your life that uh, you get... Uh, uh, more uh, understanding of where you are when you admit that you're wrong in something and, and it humbles you. Uh, it, it brings you to an area to where you're not, you're not always right. And uh, I think sometimes we can get a prideful nature to where we believe we're right all the time. And then that uh, builds into the wrong mindset and we don't want to have that type of mindset. We want to have a mindset of humility and humbleness, uh, not to turn around and, and be uh, so bad that we put ourselves down or feel uh, withdrawn, but a point of to where we uh, are not so prideful that people can't uh, listen to us or be around us or, or receive anything from us. Uh, if anything, we want to make sure that people are receiving. Uh, receiving is a major thing. Uh, no, step number two, uh, it says uh, the key to step number t uh, five, uh, key two is, this is to God. Uh, of all people, of everything in this world, uh, like last, the last lesson, you first must, you know, believe that there is God. You know I mean? If you don't believe that there is a God, uh, you might believe that there's something else. And, uh, I'm going to tell you right out, I'll lay it flat out. That's your choice. However, uh, what I believe and what I've come to know and understand of the Bible, uh, God in the beginning, the, in Genesis 1, 1, it says God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, it didn't say, uh, anybody else It didn't label anybody else and it didn't give anybody else's name. And it's funny how the the Bible in itself in general is one of the most published books in, in the world, uh, the most published books in the, in the world. And with that being said, there must be some substance or some uh, stability to it, or I should say authenticity to it, uh, to where we, we question it and to where we would want to learn more about it. Uh, I don't push it on anybody. I, you know, you got to learn at your pace. I can't make you. Uh, read the Bible, but if you ever want uh, some guidance or some, a better understanding of, of maybe how to read the Bible or what to read and where to find it, uh, feel free to uh, text me at 248-709-3088. That is my cell phone number that I am open 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, you can leave a message, leave a voicemail message, uh, leave a text message, and I will respond. I might not get back to you right away, but I will respond to your uh, your text or your phone calls, as well as you can uh, drop me an email at theperfectfit12step at gmail.com. Again, that's theperfectfit12step at gmail.com, and I would love to, uh, to uh, respond to that as well. Uh, you can also drop in on our webpage for those of you that are maybe ministers or maybe correctional centers or... or, uh, or uh, uh, counseling programs that you're trying to look for something to, to help people through drug addiction and so forth, or just addiction and compulsive behaviors in general. Uh, you're more than welcome to this uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, it is free. It does not cost anything, and you're free to use it uh, wherever. Uh, if you would like instructions or uh, would like a seminar on it, uh, that uh, would be at your expense, but I would love to uh, come out uh, and uh, Go over it with your church, go over it with the correctional centers, counseling, whatever, and share this program because it does work. Uh, I celebrated uh, on uh, February the 10th, which was my daughter's 30th year. I celebrated 30 years of, of uh, sobriety, and I thank God for that because if it wasn't for him, I know where I'd be. Uh, I would not be here probably, uh, and uh, I would beg to say I'd probably be uh, where most people don't want to be. Uh, 
So in, in saying all that, uh, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Excuse me. Uh, lesson number, uh, or excuse me, not lesson number three. Lesson number five, uh, we are looking at key uh, number three, and we want to go into a little bit more of that. Uh, key number three says to ourselves. Uh, first, uh, we admit in key one, we admitted. Uh, second, uh, we admitted uh, to God. And then uh, third, we are admitted to ourselves. Now, why would you want to admit to yourself uh, anything? Uh, uh, you know what you've done and what you've said and how you've reacted and, and your wrongs. Uh, so why would you want to admit it? Uh, <clears throat> admission is a recognition. Uh, you're recognizing that there is an issue, that there is a problem, and something not just that there is, but something needs to be done about it. Uh, you're, you're, you're saying, hey, uh, I know there's a spot on the wall and I need to paint it. But you're not just saying, I know there's a spot on the wall and I need to paint it. You're actually saying, I know there's a spot on the wall, I need to paint it, and you're going to put the action behind it. And that's why this lesson is so important uh, in step number five. You, you, you're walking the steps. Uh, obviously, if you're watching this video, you're taking the steps. So, Or you're, you're starting in step five and you haven't even went over step one, two, three, and four. However, I'm not... Uh, against anybody starting a step at step 12, one, whatever. But I am, uh, I do want to reinforce this is that you do go through all 12 steps and that you do uh, take the curriculum seriously. You read it, you work it because it does work. It worked in my life and I know it can work in yours. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, without any further ado, let me get further into this. So you want it, you want to understand that admitting uh, to God and to yourself is basically a recognition. You're recognizing that there is an issue, there is a problem, there is something that needs to be addressed, but you're not just recognizing it, you're doing something about it. By step five, you should be doing something about it. Uh, key number four is this, it says to others. So now we, we understand that we admitted to God and to ourselves, but now it brings it out in the open and says to others, why? Uh, to, to admit to God is one thing because, you know, uh, God to me and to anybody else, uh, he's invisible. I don't see God, although uh, I can't say I don't see him. I don't see him physically there. Let me put it that way. I do see him in his, his reflection in others' lives. I do see him in uh, things that go on around me, but I don't see him physically. And with that being said, uh, to admit it to him is one thing. Uh, to turn around and to admit it to myself is another because I don't have to tell anybody. <laughs> it's just me, myself, and I. And then uh, to admit it to others now, it's a different plateau. So I want you to look at it as this. You, you've, you've come to uh, admit. You, first off, you've admitted. You come to the admission point of your life to where you said, you know what? I got a problem. There's something going on. I need to quit buying shoes. I need to quit buying uh, these expensive uh uh, lottery tickets. I need to quit going to the to the uh, casinos. I need to quit drinking. I need to, whatever it is in your life that that you need to have addressed. Uh, I, I want to leave it an open concept because if we leave it as a closed concept, then that makes us closed minded. And addiction is more than just uh, drugs and alcohol. It's it's a lot more, and people just don't realize it. And one thing stems to the other. I know that in my addiction and my compulsive behaviors in my life at the time that I uh, got into a program, I needed to understand this stuff in this fashion. And I thank God that he's worked in my life to bring it to where it is today. Uh, I don't think it'd be where it is today if it wasn't for him. I, well, I know it wouldn't be, uh, but I thank him for that. And for others, it helped. Uh, I, I had brother uh, Larry Long, sister Long, brother Richard Davis, uh, brother... Uh, uh, Marvin Walker, Pastor Marvin Walker. I had uh, Brother Tom Rakowski. I had uh, a few people helping me in this program. And uh, to this day, uh, Brother Mike Jewett. And uh, to this day, we uh, uh, stay in contact, but we're not working together anymore on it. But God's still furthering this program. He's still This program's still growing. The ministry's still growing. And I thank God for that. Uh, but the fact there is, is this, we admitted that there was something that needed to be addressed. We admitted it to God. We admitted it to ourselves and we admitted it to others for this factor. 
the exact nature, which is key number five, the exact nature of our wrongs, of our wrong, of our wrongs. And number six is key six is of our wrongs. The exact nature. What was the exact nature of your wrong? You know, what? I, I'm sorry, God. You know, uh, I shouldn't have been watching that. Uh, I shouldn't have been doing those things, Lord. And you know what, Mike? You know what? You need you need to just understand that if God forgives you, you need to forgive yourself. You need to know that it is wrong and that you need not to do it. And then you need to admit it to others. You know, honey, or, or uh, Bob or, or John or Cindy or, or whoever, you know, I was wrong. Uh, you know, I got sidetracked. I did this, this, and this. And and uh, I'm going to make it up. I, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to change. You watch. You see. You know what? The best thing that I found in my life wasn't so much to proving my life to other people, but it was proving it to myself. Hello? I'm going to pause there for emphasis added. It was proving it to myself. Proving it to myself that I wasn't a statistic. Proving it to myself that I uh, had an issue, but I could overcome it. Proving it to myself that, you know what? There was a power. There is a power greater than myself that dwells in me, that helps me today uh, be the overcomer and the, and, uh, the one that is able to, to fight against this addiction and compulsive behavior. And not only that, uh, to, to know the exact nature of it and to profess it and then, and then know what, that it's wrong. It's not right. It is wrong and it needs to be addressed. When we turn around and shut the light out and we don't address it, there's issues. So with that said, I want to flip over here, if I could, uh, to the uh, extra material, which comes in these curriculum packages uh, for lesson number five. And we're going to talk about personal reflection. Excuse me, I have to clear my sinuses for a second. But we're going to talk about <coughs> personal reflection. Describe some feelings you experienced when making your inventory. So in step number four, uh, those of you that have yet to do step number four, in step number four, we actually did an inventory and uh, we checked off some things that we didn't like about ourselves and that we didn't like about others. We checked off some things that that uh, about others and, and then we checked off some things about ourselves. So we basically did a personal inventory. But it says to describe some feelings you experience when making your inventory. You know, I looked at it as this way. It's, it's a transparency and that in that transparency, it's hard sometimes to be transparent with, with others, let alone with yourself. And uh, we want to think everything's perfect. Uh, sorry, that's just me and, and others. We all want to think everything's perfect. There's nothing wrong. We don't do anything wrong and everything's going to be okay. But that's not true. Not everything's perfect. Uh, excuse me. Uh, number two, the question number two says, it says, how did the process of doing your inventory bring you closer to God? Uh, in doing your inventory, there was some questions in there about God or, or your relationship with God in hopes that you would spark an interest or an understanding of who he is. Like I said, in the beginning, in, the, in Genesis 1-1, you read it for yourself in the Bible. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. Anything that I mentioned scripture-wise, Anything that I quote scripture-wise, I don't give you the verse or chapter for it. Text me, I'll get it to you. But you want to make sure that it's in the Word of God. If it's not there, I shouldn't be saying it and you shouldn't be learning it. So uh, in Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You need to know that God is in the beginning, period. Uh, before all mankind, before anything that was created, before any earth, anything. Any drugs, any alcohol, any dresses, any shoes, any uh, pornography, any uh, money, any uh, dr uh, gambling, any uh, 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 premarital sex, any of that. It, it was, it was, God was before all that is what I'm trying to say. And knowing that, it's easier to understand that I can go to him and I can lay it down at his altar. I can lay it down before him and I can say, God. You created me in your infinite wisdom. 
and all your mighty knowledge and all that you do. You created me and you created me and fashioned me in your image and likeness. However, God, every day I fail you, but you see it fit to, Lord, bless me and to, to keep me here for whatever reason and to bless those that I come in contact with and, and to speak into others' lives and, and to speak into my life and help me to overcome anger and frustration. I mean, it's I could go on and on and on. Doing a personal inventory. How did it? How did the process bring you closer to God? Think about it. What are your hopes and fears surrounding step five? <clears throat> well, we basically hit the crux of step five. But what are your hopes and fears surrounding it? Uh, are you afraid? Are you afraid admitting to God and to others uh, your exact, the exact nature of your wrongs? Are you afraid to do that? you got to remember this too. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yes, I said it. The spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Hello? Hear me again. Fear is a spirit. And the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. So why do we fear? Think about that. Why do you fear? If God didn't give it to you, why do you do it? Uh, number four says, which, which of your faults is the most difficult to acknowledge to another human being and why? Maybe one fault is harder to understand than the other. Maybe one fault is harder to admit than the other. I mean, uh, I remember doing drugs and alcohol and my wife said, you know, you spent our, all our money again. And I'd sit there and lie through my teeth. No, I didn't. Knowing I did, it was hard for me to tell her I did. Especially knowing that we had two kids in diapers that needed milk and, 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 and uh, guidance and direction. And here I am throwing away the money on what? On drugs. And you know what? I'm going to tell you another thing. Drugs and alcohol and all that stuff, it only lasts for a season. It's, it's there one day and gone the next. <clears throat> it's just like going and gambling. Your money's in your pocket, but you keep it up and eventually it's gone. And then when it's gone, then what? What's left? Uh, it's just like uh, having premarital pre sex or 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 uh, fornicating or or committing adultery. Those things in your life, after a while, the the relationship you thought was going to last forever is gone. <coughs> so it's something to think about. No one can make you do anything. It's you got to be your choice. Number six says, in what ways did you feel God unconditional love for you? In what ways did you feel God's unconditional love for you? I have to ask this question because, I mean, first off, if you don't believe in God, you're not going to ask God or feel any love for you. Uh, however, if you believe in God, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to have a relationship. And when you have a relationship with somebody, you either do one of the two things. You either love them or hate them. You don't, you don't have a relationship uh, to uh, do anything other than you, you're going to love somebody or you're going to hate the relationship. One of the two. It's, it's that way for a reason. And God's the same re relationship. You're going to love God or you're going to hate him. The Bible says you can't have two masters. You're going to love one or hate the other. You know, you, you got to choose. It, it comes down to you making a choice. And uh, when God showed his unconditional love to me in my life, uh, it changed me. Uh, it changed me more than you would ever know. I remember uh, going and teaching these programs back in Troy, Michigan to some people in, uh, in a 12-step program in uh, the uh, county, uh, county facility. And in teaching, we taught uh, in uh, this program in that teaching. And as, teaching, and as we were teaching this program, uh, there was a gentleman that came up to me and he says, Brother Maine, he says, I want to tell you something. He says, you know, who? you're the cleaner. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I, he's like, you're the cleaner. And I go, I, well, okay, cool. Thanks. You know, I'm, I try to take everything with a grain of salt. And he goes, no, you don't understand. You're the cleaner. You need to watch the program. I go, really? It goes on TV. He goes, no, nah, it's off TV, but you can watch it on YouTube. Watch it. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I was like, okay. 
So being new uh, uh, to this program and never seeing it before in my life, and then turning around and knowing my relationship with God was growing and growing and growing, and uh, it was just a, a, an amazing relationship with God that I have, and I thank Him for it. And uh, I watched the uh, video, uh, and I want to tell you halfway through the video, I was snotting and crying like a baby. And uh, my wife come out, and she goes, what's wrong? And I was, I was crying so hard. I was trying to catch my breath in my tears. And I'll never forget it. It was just something that only God, it was just like he just came in and he just put his arms around me. And from what this guy had told me and from what I watched, I didn't realize what was going on and the transformations that were taking place in this program, not just in myself, but in the people that the program was being taught to. And even today, you that are listening tonight or how, whenever you're watching this video, there's a transformation taking place in your life. You've turned to this program for a reason. It, maybe it's just to get closer to God. Maybe it's just to, to turn around and to, and to understand more about walking the 12 steps. Maybe it's just to get another program in your life because all the other programs you've ever tried and you failed. But you know, whatever it is, I want you to know that God, unconditional love, is for you. And you won't understand what it feels like until you experience it. I can't experience that unconditional love for you. You have to experience it for yourself. Number seven says, what are you using to distract yourself from the pain of being broken? Et cetera, like TV, radio, music, uh, activities, work, relationships, substance abuse, religion, etc. I've heard it said in, in uh, religious uh, organizations as well as uh, in uh, addiction and recovery programs that, you know, you replace something with something. Uh, you don't steal and, and then go and turn around and give. You know, you nine times out of ten, you be, you used to steal and now you become a giver. Uh, you you don't uh, uh, hate somebody and keep hating. You hated somebody then and now you become a lover. You know, things change. It's, it's the exact opposites of what it was. So what have you, uh, what are you using to distract, uh, distract yourself from the pain of being broken? You answer these questions. I'm not going to give you all my answers, but you answer these questions. Number eight says, which of these, uh, which of your character traits or weaknesses cause you to feel or fear or embarrassment when you think of sharing your story with another human being? What, what weaknesses cause you to feel fear or embarrassment when you think of sharing your story with another human being? You have to answer that. You answer it for yourself. If you have questions, you want more answers, or have questions to the questions, forward them to me via email, theperfectfit12step at gmail.com, or text me at 248-709-3088. Again, it's Reverend Mike Main, the Perfect Fit Christian-Based 12-Step Program. Number nine says this, when confessing his sins, <clears throat> when confessing his sins, the prodigal son had to admit the terrible errors of his ways. What do you most want to tell someone about the errors of your ways? What have you hidden? What's been in the closet that you've not been able to overcome? Uh, what, what are you still struggling with? It's something that you have to come to an understanding about and you're willing to share it. That's what step number five is about. Here's some more questions in step number five. It says, after working through your fourth step, questions what do you realize about your limitations and capabilities i talked about some of our limitations and some of our capabilities if you don't uh understand when it talked about it go back uh visit us at the perfect fit at weebly.com the perfect fit at weebly.com and uh when you do visit us there make sure you go to the 12 step uh curriculum when you go to the 12-step curriculum, the whole lesson is right there. 
You can print it out. You can look at it uh, live on your TV, on your smartphone. Uh, it's it's compatible with most devices, Apple and Android. And you, it's there for you. It's free. It's not costing you anything. And look the lesson over. Look over lesson number four and see what it's talking about, about your limitations and capabilities. Number two says, describe any person who has helped you to see yourself more clearly and objectively in your process of recovery and of life. Uh, I remember plenty of times in class, you know, uh, Brother Tom, Brother Richard uh, will profess as well uh, that we were in class and that one of the uh, kids in class or one of the adults in class would admit, you know, hey, Brother Maine, you were a help. What you said here tonight, what you shared about your testimony was a help in my life. See, the Bible even says we are known by our testimonies for a reason. It's because if it wasn't for the testimony of Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood, Lord. If it wasn't for the testimony of Paul, if it wasn't for the testimony of, of uh, Peter, if it wasn't for the testimony of David, I wouldn't have the understanding of God and his unconditional love for every one of us like I do today. You need to learn that for yourself. You need to develop a personal relationship with him. That's your choice. It's not mine. It's yours. Uh, number three says, what qualities would you like to have in a sponsor? Now, that's another avenue. Step five, you should be at a point to where you're admitting to God, you're admitting to yourself, and you're admitting to others. You're telling somebody else about what's wrong in your life. And it's not your mom, not your brother. Somebody's going to listen to you and let it go to the wayside. It's actually somebody that's going to listen to you and give you some advice in hopes that you take it and use it and run with it. Number four says, what down, uh, write down, sorry, and I cannot see. All these sinuses are driving me crazy. Uh, write down the, same, the names of the most trustworthy people that you know. Do you think that they would be willing to or interested in being a sponsor for you? Maybe it's somebody outside of your family. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's a, somebody that you found in a group. Maybe it's me. You know, uh, feel free. I would love to be somebody's sponsor. Uh, I sponsor a lot of people, and but you know what? There's ne you can never sponsor enough people. Look at Jesus Christ; he sponsored all us. Hello. Uh, describe your feelings and expectations about sharing your fifth step with with your sponsor. How did you feel about sharing that? Were you willing to share it? Uh, number six says a list of people that you think of that might share your story that you might share your story with. Write whether you. Sorry, I would have sneezed. Uh, write whether you think they are safe or a safe risk, uh, safe, risky, or bad choice to your work, to your work, to work your step, uh, step to work your fifth step uh, with. So somebody that you're willing to trust, that you're willing to work, uh, work that step with. Write it down. Uh, here's another. It says person or safe, risky, or bad choice. Write down the person's name and then write down what you feel about it. Your feelings are your feelings. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The one true thing that you own in this world today is your feelings. You own that. What The way you feel is the way you feel. Uh, nobody can control that. You're sad, you're sad. You're happy, you're happy. You're mad, you're mad. There are people that can influence that feeling, but they can't make you feel that way. It's ultimately your choice. Hello? Ultimately, it's your choice. Uh, describe who you have chosen to be your sponsor and how they reacted when you approached them. Some sponsors, excuse me, some sponsors are willing and then some sponsors are timid. They stand off at a distance and they're not sure. Or they only connect with certain people which uh, that's a selective sponsor. And, and there are those, just like there are selective people uh, in this world that you will talk to and people you won't talk to. Uh, describe what it was like in sharing the fifth step. How did you feel before, after, and during the process? Are you glad that you have, uh, that you have done this? It's your choice. You have to answer that. I can't answer that for you. Uh, describe any celebration or activities that you have done in honor of completing the fifth step. I want to tell you something. 
There's nothing wrong with celebrating. Let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with celebrating. Sorry. Uh, you can celebrate. You just got to know how to celebrate. We don't do the things we used to do. We don't talk the way we used to talk. Things are different today. I want to read to you this out in the open just to give you a little bit of understanding that what's in these curriculums and, and uh, to know that there's a lot of material. There's interaction stuff in here. There's all kinds of stuff that will help you walk through the fifth step process and working that step in your life or in, with others. Uh, out in the open, after having written out an inventory of the negative and the positive aspects of my life, I still didn't feel rid of the bad things or able to concentrate on the good, on the good ones. I saw that I had more work to be done or to do before I could be free from the powerful pattern I was uncovering. When you are at this point, when you are at this point, I was advised, seek out another surrender, surrendering person whom you trust and share that list. It's not that God needs to know or to know our self-centered character traits and harmful behaviors. He already does. But we need to be clear out of the basement. We need to be clear out of the basement of our lives from the past by bringing these things out in the open. We need to, we need the humility that the experience brings in order to clear our vision so we can see God's light in the denied corners of our lives. For years as a committed Christian, I had to try to clean up my life without this step. I was like a man who was who kept foaming, excuse me, fumigating his house but had a basement full of dead dogs. Things sometimes look clean to me, but they never smelled quite right. Hello? <laughs> For me, it was necessary to be humble myself by reading my by reading my inventory before God and another person. As I told my secrets, they lost some of the power over me, and I wasn't so afraid to be and I wasn't so afraid to be known. It was the only then through the sense of God's forgiveness that followed that I became able to make amends where feasible and find serenity and joy of living in the light as the biblical writer speaks of it. The relief was enormous. Out in the open. These are just some of the things that are in the, in the curriculum for the Perfect Fit Christian Based 12 Step Program that you can benefit from. These are stories, true stories, some fiction, but they help. They help give us a, a picture, paint a picture. I mean, I could walk in an art museum and see a picture and stand there like some people can for hours just thinking, wow, what was that artist thinking? <coughs> what was he not just thinking, but what gave him the idea to paint this, that color, or to brush this way, or how did he get that concept to shed the light over there and, and do this with the water and so forth? And I just love it. The same thing with reading uh, books. And, and uh, when I was in high school, I hated reading. But as I grew and I got uh, into uh, church, God just took me through his word and taught me so much. And I thank him for that today. Without him, again, I know where I'd be. Uh, and then uh, the last material that I want to share with you tonight is to go back over to the lesson again because I want to I want to make sure we're we're concrete on this uh, is that we admitted to God to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrong uh, our wrongs in life are a lot 
Uh, I know I've done a lot of wrong in my life, uh, especially as a young man. I was not uh, perfect by any means. And the Bible says there's none perfect. No, not one. Uh, if you don't believe me, look it up in the Bible. But uh, with that being said, I struggled uh, as a young man uh, trying to do things in my life and trying to uh, be an overcomer and, and uh, know that there was more to life uh, than just uh, doing drugs and alcohol and promiscuous sex and all the things that went on, pornography, all that stuff. Uh, I knew that there had to be more. And in my life today, even though I got a cold and I sound like a horse, <laughs> uh, I thank God for where I am. I thank God I had the opportunity to come on here tonight and and he gives me the strength and, and uh, the wisdom and the knowledge to, to speak to you here tonight and to share a little bit of light, shine a little bit of light, hopefully in your life and others, that, that it may help you to help others. Uh, know that uh, none of us are perfect. We're all uh, imperfect. But God's unconditional love is what makes us perfect to him. Uh, that's what draws us closer to him. And that's what makes that relationship so good. Uh, I want you to uh, know tonight that you can trust him. You can trust him with all your heart, with all your soul. You can trust him in many different areas of your life. Take the time to trust him. And don't just trust him. Let him in. Let him be part of your life. Let him make a change. Let him, let him do something with you that, that would just blow your mind. And know that he is able to do it. And he won't just do it. It will happen. Uh, this is Reverend Mike Main, again, coming to you from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, we are ending this program, this session tonight, lesson number five. We admitted to God and ourselves, to another human being, the exact natures of our wrongs. Uh, we want to do that and work that step. Uh, keep working your steps. Uh, again, my phone number is 248-709-3088. Again, that's 248-709-3088. Uh, you can meet with us every Friday here at 7 p.m. On YouTube, it is pre-recorded. Uh, be sure to like us and subscribe to our channels. Support us as we support you, and as you support support us, we can support others as well. Uh, know that we are here for you, and we want to uh, help. We want your help to help others, uh, and we hope we helped you tonight. Again, I thank you. I'm gonna get off here because I'm really congested right now. And I thank the Lord for all that we've been able to do here tonight. God bless you and have a great week and stay out of trouble. Bye now. I wonder how I will make it. Oh God, but I trust you. Sometimes the pain in my life. Oh God, it makes you seem so far away. Can I get a witness, somebody? But God, I trust you.